Hello. Uh, so today I'm finally making the video where I'm gonna show you uh, the how to unwrap the UVs for the track we made last time. So first I would like to apologize uh, for my accent. <laughs> Uh, English is not my native language, so sorry for that. And uh, also the poor quality uh, quality of my microphone, but I think it will be enough to understand uh, what I'm doing. <clears throat> so first, uh, uh, let's say uh, you have a texture, a road texture. Maybe later uh, in uh, another video I'm going to show you how to uh, make a road texture from scratch uh, and uh, create all the map you need, like specular, normal map, uh, etc. So the texture can be the shape you want. It can be square. It can be rectangular. It can be. There's no. If it's for video game, be sure that uh, it's a power of two. The resolution that, uh, of your map. Uh, you know, for example, this one is um, see 4K wide and 2K height. Uh, <coughs> uh, the only important thing is that uh, the two uh, border, like the left one and the right one, or the up one and the down one, if your texture is. Uh, uh, vertical uh, match one with each other. So once you have your texture, uh, we're going back to 3ds Max. So we're gonna open the the material editor uh, with M. So I'm using like the old uh, slot material, uh, but uh, it's the same with the with the nodal one. So I'm gonna make a standard material and just put my road texture. So road standard up. I'm gonna select the track and I'm gonna apply it to the track. So if I press show me the material and of course the texture, you can see that the track is taking the general color of the texture, but we can't see pixel. It's just like uniform grayish. Uh, it's because we worked from a spline, and at no moment we put uh, a UV mapper, so there are no UV coordinate. Uh, so, th so there is just like a grayish uh, general tone of the texture applied to the. To the object. So how we're gonna apply uh, that texture? We're gonna use uh, a spline to have the texture follow the track correctly. And how we're gonna do that is very simple. First we, we're gonna create, uh, we will create the the spline. So you go into the edge selection and you select an edge and by holding shift you can uh, select the whole loop in one click. The thing is that my edge is not in the center of the track. Uh, to have the texture mapping work better, I'm just gonna step up a little bit here to have a spline in the middle. It doesn't really matter uh, how much polygon uh, there is in the in the in the model in the object. Uh, the important thing is that the spline follow the general shape and in the middle of the general shape. So I'm going to select all those edges, the complete loop. I'm going to close that. 
and one, once it's done I'm gonna create the shape see here in edit edges I have a create shape option I'm gonna click on the box so I have more option so I'm I'm just doing that to automatically automatically uh, have the the, the rename uh, option so I'm just gonna take call it um, I don't know, texture, spline it's not very really important, you can call it whatever you want then I press OK so now I have still my rest track selected but if I click on the spline yep, I have a spline that follow exactly the track Ctrl Z to get the spline back in place. So now we're gonna select the track and finally put the unwrap UV modifier here. So now you can see we can we can see the texture not that there now that there is the UV the unwrap modifier. If I unselect it to see it better, we can see there is the white line um, because it did uh, automatically a planar project pro projection. See, if I display the texture, it's stretched because my texture is not square. If I go back to uh, it's just the, the display that stretch too much the the ratio of the texture. So this is not what we want. Obviously, uh, we would like to have that texture repeat repeated a multiple time along the track, and if possible without being too much stretch. So how we're gonna do that? It's really easy. We're gonna use the spline spline mapping option. So first we need still in the UV modifier. We're gonna select all the polygons we want uh, to to modify their UVs so obviously it's all of them and now that something is selected I can click on this one so I'm gonna click on it and he asks me uh, which spline I want to use I'm gonna use this one see something happen here and it doesn't look quite right. It's normal because uh, since the road is something flat and not a pipe, for example, we're gonna prefer to use the planar projection. So we're gonna commit. So now we have all the track projected in this shape it's kind of a see it like a as a snake skin or something so where <coughs> the mapping is wider it's precisely where the road is wider see here if I select those vertex or those vertex it's because it's wider here the thing is that we want uh, our texture applied uniformly along the track uh, without uh, taking the the the, the wide uh, into account. So we're gonna ha need to straight those line of vertex, and it's really easy. You just select one sadly you we you can't use the old shift uh, technique but yeah, it's not 
that that difficult anyway so we're gonna press you can align horizontal align vertical there is uh, some transform option here and by one click on align vertical it's traded so now we're gonna use we're gonna do it for all the vert vertices Here we go. Here we go. We can like see if none is missing. I think it's good. Yeah, don't don't forget to vert this because if not. Uh, you're gonna see some texture deformation uh, on your object, on your track in the end. It's really not hard. Kind of a straightforward process. Uh, not that much. <laughs> I have those vertex that are behind the other one. Here we are. Okay. So you can see that when the project pro projection was done along the spline, uh, it cut uh, those faces not in a straight line maybe this face should be here we can see it uh, looking at the green intersection the green line means it's uh, an open border on the UV and you really don't want that you want an open border where your object is open but not inside the object so we're gonna select the top one, just break them from the the projection and just move them. If I select that vertex, this one showing in blue saying oh it's the same vertex. So I think this one too, so it's okay the projection gonna match i'm just putting it here it's not in important if it's not really pre precise the important thing is that after you weld them and when it's correctly weld the edge turn white So I might have to do some merging here, see, I had open I have open edges here on the UV. It's good. See, now I have a straight green line, that means that the the hole wrapping around the track gonna have to match here it's here gonna have to match with here so you can see that it's a it's a bit stretch and most importantly it's not oriented oriented correctly so I'm gonna select first I'm gonna select everything use the rotation snap and turn this 90 degrees now I'm gonna stretch it on the vertical axis and you can see that my my text my texture is still stretch but like my two white line in the border are placed correctly along all the track 
now I just have I just need to stretch it sorry on the horizontal axis so all my faces will match the typical length of a face on the track so up by holding shift I force the stretch only on one axis so I continue and slowly we can see the texture is sliding until the scale is pretty good how do you know the scale is good? well um, the best way and the fastest way is to use the checker pattern it's gonna replace the texture once again the, <coughs> the stretch automa automatically change because I use a rectangular texture and, uh, and this one the, the check is a square one so it just adapt but basically it doesn't change your UV so the thing is to have square that look square so you're gonna stretch until the square looks square and that's mean that you're gonna have a, a pretty good pixel ratio not stretch pixel ratio here so now we can see that the whole track is correctly using like the deformation and the turns that's why all the line vertical line are not straight because it follow the deformation of the track but the whole track is mapped along that texture and to see how it how it tiles how it repeat you you're gonna go in up op, in uh, option preference <coughs> tile bitmap and here you can adjust the amount of tiles you can see so I think I'm gonna have like a value of 45 to see the whole thing so now the, the UV mapping should be good and if I close that and I unselect my object I remove by pressing F4 the wireframe I should see that there is a cut in the texture at the border so if you use it in a game you're gonna see that so how we do it it's pretty easy so we select our object the racetrack we can see that there is the open uh, edge here it's green so open UV editor and what you're gonna have to do First, we're gonna we're gonna add in vertically this point, and then <coughs> it's the tr trickiest part. We're gonna tile the bitmap again. The best way is, for example, to put. Uh, a pink pixel on your texture on a layer on, a, on Photoshop that you're gonna discard after to be sure to be at the same place for that side of the road if I select all the vertices vertices so I didn't do like the pink pixel but you know what I mean and uh, that side and the other side will have to match the same thing I'm just gonna try to recognize that stain and match it 
on the other side. Sorry, sometimes my mouse just do silly stuff. So here is the stain and it should be around here. Yep. So I'm gonna take those vertices by holding shift I'm gonna move them on one axis and I think it's somewhere around here. Like if I if I had put like the pink pixel uh, as an helper on the texture, I will have done done it like precisely. But you can also use the grid. There is plenty of different way. Uh, so now that I move that, I I stretch a little bit the texture. So I'm just gonna move a little bit the other one to. So the stretch and the texture are gonna be barely visible. Here we are. And so now we should still see a cut in the texture, but really, no, we can, we can see it anymore. So it was done good. <laughs> so it's done uh, quick and maybe dirty. But it works, it's easy, um, you can iterate, test your track, add the texture, modify your track, redo the texture really easily. So I think I think it's a good method. So that's it for today and uh, thanks for watching.